Eluarts is really proud to unveil Flux. Situated in one of Claudia Parsons Hall's courtyards, it's one of the most ambitious student artworks realised on the campus of British University in recent years. Funded by Barry and Valerie Eccleston, the sculpture was produced by Kiara Brown, Fred Hendry Bryars and Andrea Pocock, an interdisciplinary team of Loughborough University students who utilised aesthetics and techniques from architecture, engineering and contemporary art. We're at the sawmill today um, in Hereford to have a look at some of the timber options and we uh, have seen one of the logs being cut up, we've looked at a few different finishes that we can have on the wood as well. This, this is yes. the wood that our sculpture will be made from? The actual logs. Um, <laughs> it's been really good today to see the size that it will be to help imagine the structure in person. The sculpture is made from sustainable Welsh larch wood, with its dark colour resulting from a burning process inspired by the Japanese wood preservation technique yakisugi, undertaken in collaboration with Goodman Restoration's sawmill in rural Herefordshire. This is uh, Goodman's yard. We're walking down now to the saw. We've got logs here which will prob some of them will probably be used in, in the project. It's lar large timber we're using. For it burns and shows a very nice grain. This is the machine it'll be sawn on. This is the actual size of the timbers that are going to be used. The burning method we've used is the Shu Shugiban, um, which is a Japanese method they use in a lot of the architectural processes over there. Um, it kind of offers a, a unique aesthetic, but it also kind of um, has a natural protection to the wood as well. Um, so it, it, it naturally protects it against the, the environment. So with a project we want to last for a few years, we need to kind of be able to, to help that process of it being um, yes, feasible for being outdoors. We went to the forest today. Um, the trees there have been planted just post of World War II. For our project, like this project in theory, the wood started like 60 years ago when mm. they were first oh, planted yeah. well, all the way through. is very much a long-term yeah. crop. It is a crop, just like, yeah. like um, corn, wheat, whatever, but you see that in, in 12 months, or probably six, yeah. eight months really. Yeah. Yeah. But um, this, is, this is a lifetime's work really. Yeah. We watched them cut the tree down, taking a notch from one side um, and making sure it fell safely in a safe place. Um, and then from that they'll transport the log to the sawmill here, which is these pieces. Um, and they'll be able to cut it to size and apply the finishes and ready for our sculpture. Artists were also provided with mentoring support from the artist Ivan Morrison. Originally, our work was very ephemeral, so it's like text-based work. We used to have like radio show things like that. But then, about 20 years ago, we bought an area of forest in Wales as a kind of uh, hidden heart to our practice. We realised that you know, to, like, to be an artist, you need to like do sort of interesting stuff sort of generate material in a way or just like have, have experiences and then work will come more naturally easily yeah. Yeah? and we decided actually the idea of an arboretum like taking a forest and then building up a collection of trees would be a really great way uh, to live an interesting life in a way like the forest doesn't really 
really, to be honest, like forests don't want you there. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like you know, we had a garden before, and like they're really needy. They want you there all the time. So without forest, they don't really want us. And this is an area of mature plantation. So we could cut down what we wanted, make space for new trees. So when we chopped down the first trees, and then we brought a mill into the wood, yeah. and they were like, oh, it's like magic. You know, it's like alchemy. Like taking something, yeah. it's just a forest, and it's. We had never couldn't quite engage with it. We couldn't work out really what it was there for, and um, and suddenly turning it into like usable stuff yeah. that we can then make art from. It was this really magic moment for us. It really transformed, like not just about making timber out of wood, but it's, I guess it's this notion of like, integrity of materials of, yeah. or of site. You know, like go have a really good look and work out what's there and what you can use. You know, what's the important thing that you can really, you know, that brings value to it, or you can bring value to it. So it's always, sometimes it's a material thing, you know. They might make, you might make cob or something, or, but it might also be like people, or something like that. So yeah, that's so, so that wood is really integral to our practice, mm -hmm. I mean, it what it is. Well, it's interesting when you say about this, uh, the situ and where it's going as well, mm. because obviously like we designed this sculpture so that it's going in a particular place on campus, it can mm. be out, interacted with, with students, mm. we wanted mm. that whole interaction with the sculpture mm. and obviously it's an art piece, so we mm. wanted all of that kind of community. Kind of combination of it all, yeah. 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 The process of kind of designing it has been done through like digi digital design, so it's all been up through 3D sort of um, uh, renders of the sculpture, um, and kind of modelling it to kind of work out the sizes and how it's going to look in person, um, kind of being able to visualise it in 3D and in, in like the re in real time, um, which has been really useful to kind of send those drawings off to the all the contractors we've been with, um, and kind of when it comes on campus, we've got the foundations going in, which are going to be the main sort of element of where the, the footing of the sculpture. Um, and kind of from that, that's where we kind of can start putting all the wood elements in and the metal footings we've designed as well. So it's kind of been a whole process of like start to finish in terms of foundations, wood, metal, and then kind of hopefully installation as well. So Barry and Valerie Eccleston are sponsoring the sculpture. Uh, Barry used to go to Loughborough University and did engineering, um, so he was very interested in having quite a structurally complex um, sculpture and Valerie, his wife, um, she has a great interest in Japanese floral arrangements, so we've tied that in with the burning of the wood. And we're very thankful for them for sponsoring this and giving us the opportunity to design something to be on campus for everyone to see for the next few years. They were both quite interested in how the sculpture sort of interacted with the surroundings as well, but being it being that dark sort of sculpture and this kind of lighter wood surrounding, yeah. um, and also how it like plays with the light, which I think Barry and ba both Barry oh, and Valerie with the shadows as well, the light and shadows and kind of the sculpture being a shadow itself, but kind of making the shadows, yeah. but also these gaps of like. Un, of like lightness as well, where the light can go through it. Playing with the negative and positive yeah. space, and the shadow like um, going up towards the sculpture and it almost becoming part of the sculpture because of the connection to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then the integration of it with the, like you said, with the actual environment already there. Yeah. Um, drawing in different elements of some of the architecture that's already on the mm -hmm. site and bringing it as part of our... It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The finished sculpture makes clever use of both positive and negative space with considerable thought given to how its shadow impacts the surrounding area. Conceptually, it references two journeys. The undulating shape is inspired by the highs and lows of the student journey, while the circular cutout references Loughborough graduate Claudia Parsons' circumnavigation of the world by car, the first by a woman. Yet it is also designed to encourage passers-by to pause and reflect, taking time out of their day to consider the work from different angles, perch on its lower elements, or use the work to frame their surroundings. I think one of the main aims with the, with the sculpture was that we could kind of create something that wasn't just a sculpture, so we wanted to make something which students could interact with um, on different levels, so kind of in, incorporating like a seating area, um, as well as a more sculptural sort of facade with, the, with a cutout that could also be also doubled up as like a seating area or like a, a more of a statement area, and then, then our third sort of zone is kind of like a more of a wall that kind of that creates an enclosed sort of space, so it, it allows for interaction, kind of how the people want to use it. So, yeah. Just bringing art into the public sphere, making sure mm. that loads of different people have access to it and that 
the students can interact with it and they're getting use out of it in sort of their everyday life. Um, hopefully in the summers it's used as a really nice hangout area outside with the good weather if we have it. Mm. Um, but also just bringing, bringing the art to campus and it's nice that all of us are stu we're ex-students and that we're alumni now um, yeah. and that we're a part of the project. I'm so thankful that Loughborough University has provided me with the opportunity to leave my artistic mark on campus. As a fine art graduate, I'm so very proud to now see our sculpture flux in situ. After many months of hard work, to see our art finally brought to life is simply incredible. For more information about the making of flux, head over to the LUArts website where you can also find information about sculptures in other halls of residence and across campus. The University is very grateful to Barry and Valerie Eccleston for their support in realising this fantastic new addition to our campus art collection.